Hey you guys, this is Earl coming to you from the great and mighty Sam Doing. He is the founder and creator of Enduring Presence. And you guys know that one of the things I'm committed to is to talk with and connect with my fellow BNI members um, in my group. And so Sam is a coach, business coach. Executive coach. Executive coach. To be precise. What's the difference? Uh, between a business coach and an executive coach? Yes. Uh, $100 an hour? <laughs> <laughs> That's awful. Uh, there, there's no difference, really. It's just that the term is usually executive coach. It can be professional coach, business coach. Then there's life coach. which is a little bit different, but, mm -hmm. uh, you know, coach, coach yeah. is coach. Coach is a coach. Well, not exactly, because your coaching style was a little bit different than when I had a coach, because I had a professional coach, um, and her thing was just to focus on me growing my sales ability. But yeah. Talk about your style. Your, your... So, so we don't want to get stuck in semantics. Right. But someone who's really providing you their intellectual capital mm -hmm. and bringing a subject matter expertise to the party, like how do I grow my leads uh, and increase my, my pipeline and whatnot, I really consider that more consulting oh. than coaching. Okay. Because consulting, you're really, uh, you're certainly talking and listening mm -hmm. and understanding what the client's needs are, but then you're providing them your expertise, telling them what you think they should do, or in some cases, just telling them what to do. Uh, that's consulting in my mind. Coaching, also a lot of, interaction, mm -hmm. active listening, uh, trying to help you define and rethink and reframe your issues, mm -hmm. your challenges or the goals you want to accomplish, and then helping you think through how you might get there, uh, providing maybe some, some uh, experience, but no recommendations per se, but rather working with you to figure out what the most effective way forward is, and then helping you get there oh. by holding you accountable, by giving you tools to use. Right. But you know, really, in coaching, I sh if I'm coaching you, I should never be telling you what I think you should do, mm -hmm. or what you should do, or what I did, or anything like that. Does that make sense? That makes sense to me. Okay. That makes sense to me. But I want to make sure that you know the people that are going to watch this video that it that they understand like how you provide value to your clients because i've heard you know when you talk in the bni group you've talked about um some you know things that you do but i really want to like narrow that down on a very not narrow it down but on a very high level like who is your type of client like what type of person do you typically like to work with let's start there all right so my target clients the people i most enjoy working with mm -hmm. and who I think get the most value out of my uh, my services and who I who I think I get the most value from are uh, earlier to mid-level professionals so oh. uh, even you could call it you could say Millennials although I'm not I'm not hooked up on a particular generation mm -hmm. uh, but people in their mid 20s to up to about 40 or so I can certainly coach beyond that but I think where I really enjoy myself, like I say, is in, is in that group. So these are people who have uh, gotten out of school, uh, started their career, they're maybe four or five years into it. Uh, they're doing well. My, my ideal client is somebody who's doing well, uh, but wants to do it faster. Oh. You know, wants to move up faster, wants to supplement the skills they already have with some additional executive level skills so that they're perceived um, as an executive before they even get there. Mm -hmm. uh, people who want to avoid common pitfalls and mistakes. You know, one of the great experiences I bring to the party is that I've made lots of mistakes. And so I can... I think we all have made lots of mistakes. Yeah. 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 So I can help my clients avoid those. And then uh, up to, you know, up to the mid-level. So up until the kind of the mid-level career, people in their late 30s and 40s, mm -hmm. uh, they've They've been moving up quickly. They've hit a spot where uh, they're in the executive ranks, you know, they're director, VP kind of level. 
And what we find is the skills that got them to where they are aren't the same skills that they need to get to the next level. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. You know, you know what I'm saying? that they, A lot of, especially in the Valley here, a lot of the skills that got them recognized and on their path mm -hmm. were, were technical skills, right? Right. And then, then, then they moved into where they needed some more management skills, but they were still touching the technical side, so they were still leveraging those. But if they got good at the, the uh, management skills, now then they move up to uh, you know the next level where it's all about influence skills, mm -hmm. and that that's a those are skills people people are not generally taught. Mm. So those are the kinds of things that where I come in, I can help them navigate those uh, those weaknesses they might have or accentuate the strengths they might have, uh, and I can also help teach some of the executive skills that they're that they're lacking. Oh, wow! I wish I had you when I was in my 20s. Yes, you do. <laughs> but yes, hey, you do. You know, <laughs> you touched on some things that I, 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 I would like to draw out just a little bit. You had mentioned something about common pitfalls. What are like the top three common pitfalls, you know, that people, you know, start off in their career, but they, sh you know, need to like watch out and look for? Yeah. So the, so some of the, let me start with the, what I think without thinking too hard about it here, right. is the most common mistake. And the most common mistake is holding on to your, what made you successful as an individual contributor. Oh. When you move into the management ranks and even more so into the director ranks and, and the executive ranks, your job is no longer about developing the quality of the product. Mm -hmm. uh, your job is no longer about balancing the financials or you, your job at that point is about managing people right period mm -hmm. and uh, the best managers are able to let go of what they used to do manage the people recognize that that they're better served by bringing on people better than themselves mm -hmm. stronger than themselves uh, and then giving them the space to succeed on their own, removing the barriers from them, but, um, but not doing, you know, not doing the work themselves. They're doing different work, but they're not doing the, the, the execution of the uh, tasks in their, in their particular department or organization. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's number one. And number two, I'd say, uh, at even the next level up, the common mistake is, it's still people related. Only now it's not so much managing the people, it's it's influencing people. It's getting an entire organization to move in a particular direction. Uh, it's it's getting uh, an organization past a particular change. It's helping people with their own anxieties and in order to perform better. <coughs> uh, and these, and I guess the mistake that people make is they don't recognize that. And they continue to think they can do the same things that they've been doing in the past when the science at that point is learning about people and understanding those people and understanding what makes them tick and understanding yourself and understanding how you connect with those people mm -hmm. and what makes them tick in order to get them to tick in a particular direction. Oh, that puts a whole nother spin to hurting the cats. That is exactly the spin that it needs. Yes. <laughs> Hurting but, the cats. But what about a third one? Because I'm sure there's got to be like the top three. So, so we've got <laughs> two so far. Is one is recognizing that, you know, what you did as an individual contributor, um, that is going to change once you get into the corporate world, yep. right? And yep. then number two, as you move up the chain, it is now about you being able to manage people and letting go of your individual contributor mindset. Right. And then the third one. So this will probably surprise you that the third one is also about people. Oh, okay. And, and, uh, and this is what I recommend to everyone I talk to, particularly younger professionals who are, who are starting off or, or not too far along. And that is, you have to care for other people. 
Mm. You have to actually like other people. You will be more successful if you open your heart up to what motivates these other people and, and get to know them on a personal level and, and help them try to be or try to help them be successful in life, mm-hmm. not just in your particular department. Oh. And so uh, an example of that, which a lot of people don't think of and a lot of people don't agree with, um, if somebody if they're, somebody on your team is ready to leave the company, you know, there's only so much kind of persuading them to stay that you want to do. At some point, it's time for them to leave the company. Right. And when they leave, a good leader helps them on their way with a referral, a reference, a testimony, or whatever, uh, and helps them set up somewhere else and be successful. A, a bad manager gets angry and hang, wants to hang on to them because now it's going to be more work for that manager, right? Oh, I'm losing a person. I'm going to have to fill that person. Recruiting's a pain in the butt. Plus, I'm going to have to backfill for them while they're gone. That just makes me mad. It's all about me. And I'm going to make it hard for that person to right, live. Right, right. Uh, that's counterintuitive. Some people think, you know, I got to be all about me to be successful. No, you don't. You, you shouldn't be about you at all. Wow. That's really deep. So I'm a deep guy. That's really deep. So we got three <laughs> things, you know, just try to make sure I got it right because there are some nuggets in there. Plus, you've also confirmed something for me, and I'll share this in a moment. Number one is making sure that you understand it as an individual. You know, what I did in high school and college to be successful, that's not what's going to make me successful once I get into the workplace. Yes. Number two, once I get a, you know above that entry-level position, now I'm into some type of leadership role, it's no longer about me as an individual contributor. It's now about me working with my team and learning how to, you know, manage my people and connect with people. And then third, you know, it's a deeper level of connecting with people such that, you know, I'm helping people to not just be better at work and productive at work, but also better and productive in their own individual lives. So not that we just get job satisfaction, but if a person decides they want to leave, they're leaving because they've been inspired to go pursue what moves them potentially yeah potentially some to that effect so it's funny that you say that because when i had an employee and i detected that she was withdrawing and um and i said okay what's going on well it turns out that she really wanted to go off and do cosmetic movie grade cosmetology Mm -hmm. and she wanted to work on the movies and as much as it pained me to let her go because of all of her experience i was like okay what do you need yeah. I was like, what do you need? Why don't you take a day off? Why don't you really think about, you know, what it is that you want? I would like for you to stay, but at the same time, I also understand that this is your passion. She showed me her Instagram work and everything and saying, let me tell you, my, I'm, like I had to pick my mouth off the floor like four times because her passion really was movie grade cosmetology like she can create monsters that would make predator look like he was a child (laughs) nicely put yes so that's what you're talking about when you're talking about you know the the three common pitfalls well that's a great example and you did a very nice job summarizing uh, my three points more concise than mine (laughs) and and i just want to re-emphasize the key word that cuts through all those is people people so it's always about people. Yes, I think it's about people. That's one reason why I'm, I do what I do. It's about the people. But you, how did you go from, because before you became a coach, what were you doing before? Well, I spent the first half of my career in management consulting. Uh, Ernst & Young, Cap Gemini, mm-hmm. enjoyed that immensely. The second half of my career I spent in high-tech sales, sales roles, sales management and leadership roles. Mm-hmm. Uh, at some point, and I loved, I loved all of that. Right. The, but the, really the, the thing that ran through it that I loved the most was always managing the people, recruiting people, developing the people, pushing the people forward. That was always my key thing. So when I got kind of sick of the high tech industry mm-hmm. a number of years ago, the industry's definitely changed since I started. Um, I, I, I went independent and started a company called Silicon Valley Consulting. And I was doing, for the last, for five years or so, I was doing miscellaneous consulting work. I really didn't have much of a focus. 
And I found over that five-year period that I was doing more and more one-on-one -on -one coaching with mm -hmm. executives and less and less sort of process improvement and strategy development and those other types of consulting projects. And I, and at some point uh, two years ago, I just decided to pull the trigger. I mean, I have to give my wife most of the credit. She decided that I was <laughs> going to pull the trigger Yes, and uh, and do this full time and exclusively. That is true. Behind every good man, there is a strong woman. Yes, yes there, there is. is indeed. Yes, and so I uh, I launched Enduring Presence uh, in two thousand eight. I, I went and got my certification and training on executive coaching so that I could do it professionally and mm -hmm. with, with purpose. And um, I couldn't be happier because this really is. I, I, I talked to some old friends. Uh, where I say this is what I'm doing and they all say oh you were born for that or you're perfect for that and I, I do think it's and I wish I'd done this many many years ago in my mm -hmm. career but I do think it, it links in really nicely with what my values and my passions are which is helping people get to the next level helping people succeed mm -hmm. the next level down a level cross a level wherever they're headed wherever they want to go mm -hmm. helping them get there good now Okay, so we talked about three pitfalls. We understand like how you got to where you're at and why you got to where you're at. But if I was to bring my nephew when he was, you know, sit down and talk to him, and we only had like two minutes, what would be the, I know you've already said earlier, you know, like people, like people, like people, but how can, how could he take that like people and then start to implement that? Like what two things could he do to start implementing? Something like like people are <laughs> <laughs> great question. Um, I'm not sure I could do it in two minutes, but let's. Just, I'll give you a few minutes. You yeah, just go ahead. Let's let's just think about this. Um, you know, okay. The f and, and 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 here's actually I think you're hitting on something actually really poignant. Mm -hmm. uh, here's the trick. The first thing you got to do before you can start working on other people, the first thing you have to do is make sure you're solid with yourself. Ding, 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 ding. Yes. Is that what you were going for? That's exactly what I want. But I wanted you to say because <laughs> me, the insurance guy, if I say it, everybody thinks yeah. I'm just trying to sell life insurance yeah. or something. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But no, it 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 really is true, and uh, and uh, I'm embarrassed you had to force me to get there. Um, <laughs> that you have to work on yourself. Uh, and it's interesting and very counterintuitive. One of the key lessons that I reiterate with my clients over and over again that, that, that are throughout the, the conversations and throughout, I, I also do some what I call active learning programs mm -hmm. to develop uh, executive skills. And throughout all of that, um, it's all about being powerful, having a lot of presence, uh, being imposing in a business not imposing, but being having presence, having strength of character in a in a business environment is all about vulnerability, and oh, and um, the V word. Oh my! And having confidence mm -hmm. is about vulnerability. Having confidence is about understanding who you are and opening your heart to other people. So, back to answering your question, if I only had. Um, one or two minutes with somebody and they, they wanted one nugget what they could do to go forward uh, it would be work on yourself learn how to learn how to let people in to your heart uh, and you have to do that before you can really reach out to their hearts I know that sounded deeper than I normally no, do it's, it, it, it's really good um, it's really good because, you know, I'm a big proponent of personal development. Just, you know, even doing this video, you know, for me is, is me trying to work on myself because, one, I hate video, two, I'm scared, and then three, you know, there's this whole thing when you're in business, you know, don't share your, you know, there's this, there's this voice out there that says don't share your platform with other people. Right, right, and so, but the people that I you know admire, you know, um, and the people that I'm wanting to become, they show their platforms, and not only that, but you know, it's like I can't get to the next level unless I'm just, I've got to put myself out there, and then, yeah. 
and I've got to do it in a way that is much bigger than what I've ever thought before. You know, I've repelled out of helicopters. This is bigger than repelling out of helicopter for me. So to hear you say that just confirms that I'm on the right path. I'm on the right path. So thank you. The other question I got for you, then I'm going to let you get get going because I know you got a lot of work to do. Um, so when you're not helping a client get to their definition of success and where they want to go, when you're not running after you, how many grandkids do you have? Two. Two, Two. grandsons. Two grandsons. When you're not running after your grandsons, when you're not at B&I and all that other stuff, how do you recharge? How do you recharge? Well, that's actually the easiest question you've asked. So far. <laughs> Thank you for letting me off on an easy one. Um, so I recharge with my family. Oh, I recharge with my grandsons. Now it's true I need to recharge after my grandsons too. <laughs> but uh, at the at the end of the day, at the end of the day, the thing that I do that's most important to me and that that it's where I kind of need to be to refresh and recharge is, is doing something with my wife, doing something with my girls, doing something with my grandsons. Mm -hmm. And oh yeah, the sons-in-law, I can I have to hang out with them too. Right. They come with the territory. They but come now, with the territory. Uh, and my extended family and friends, that's that's what I like to do. See, everybody's got to have a recharge time. Absolutely. So, so Sam, tell my viewers and my guests and all this, all these amazing people how can they, if they want to learn more about you and connect with you, how can they do it? What's your website? What's your email address? The whole nine yards. So my uh, my company's name is Enduring Presence. Uh, and it, it reflects the fact that I help people develop their personal presence and their executive presence. Um, and I hope to do it in a way that is, you know, enduring for them and, and uh, long lasting. So my website is www.EnduringPresence.com and my email address is simply Sam at EnduringPresence.com. So the keywords there are Enduring and Presence. Yes, and I'll include a link at the bottom of the video so that people can find if you. If you're doing it right, it should be right down here. It's somewhere. down there yeah. somewhere. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and then and then just to give you guys a little bit extra background. So, you know, Sam is part of the reason why I decided to start shooting these videos because his YouTube channel. Oh, that's right. You started a YouTube channel, right? I did. Oh, yeah. So he started a YouTube channel and I was like, well, if he can do it, I can do it. Right? That's true. So... He is my second person that I've interviewed, um, and he's a list of many to come. I will probably try to get him on again to probably address some other, you know, personal development things as, you know, as time allots, right? Yeah. But anyway, okay. um, thank you guys for watching. Greatly appreciate that. In the comment section, please list what you got out of it. Please, uh, you know, tell us what you got. And then like and share. Like and share because... There's other young people that are looking to be a top performer and they just need that little extra boost, that little extra guidance. And Sam, you know, is the right person to go to. And just to answer the question that some of you are wondering, like, well, Earl, how does this relate to insurance? Because it's all about life. It's all about living. It's all about making sure at the end of the day, you have what you need to live the life that you say that you want. And that is what we do in the insurance industry. Thank you for having me, Earl. Thank you, Sam. Greatly appreciate it. All right, now we're going to talk about something else. Bye, you guys. Bye.